books. Here in my garage, and this is all my knowledge and the other dead memes. 28 year old man discovers books is a thing. <laughs> it's the end of the year and I wanted to make a sort of summary and talk about some of my favorite books that I read this year. And I also wanted to make this book to hopefully inspire you guys or more people in general to read as well. The percentage of teenagers that read for fun is at an all time low. Let's change that. Oh yeah. The reason why I started reading was because I uh, made actually a New Year's resolution. So I thought, okay, well maybe this could, uh, you guys can pick the same resolution. Maybe you guys have the same problems as I had, which is that I kind of have a problem with finishing things. Sounds a bit weird, but generally as soon as things get a little difficult, I, I get bored and I move on to something else. And this could be for even silly stuff like playing a video game. If it gets boring at some point, I, I don't really care to finish it and I'll just buy a new game or move on to something else. Or whether it's a hobby project, as soon as it gets a little boring, I, I, I generally don't finish it. So I, I miss that feeling of finishing something. I miss that gratifying feeling of, you know, even if it wasn't the most fun. <laughs> I still am glad I went through with it. I'm still glad I, I can move on to the next thing. Preachy moment incoming, in case it hasn't been preachy enough so far. I think especially with social media as well, which literally never has an end to it. It's just something that keeps going and going and going and going. I wanted to have that feeling. So I said that my New Year's resolution was gonna be that no matter what I do, I'm gonna finish it. And I didn't have books in mind at all. It just sort of became a coincidence that I decided, okay, I'll read a book and even if I don't like it, I don't care. I'm just gonna finish it. Finish it. So I started off with reading sci-fi, and uh, to be fair, I didn't really enjoy it that much. <laughs> I'm still glad I read it, and I knew I wanted to read something different next, and I really enjoyed that. And it just sort of came, moved on and on and on, and here I am later, and I'm so happy. I'm so glad I made this decision. One of the major discoveries for me this year was discovering my favorite author, which I talked a lot about on this channel, which is. Yukio Mishima. Didn't know anything about this author when I read him, which I think really added to the effect for me. So I almost don't want to talk about him because discovering him as, was equally as fun almost, or it uh, really added to the experience for me. I, uh, I tweeted out on Twitter asking if there was any recommendations for Japanese authors because I enjoyed reading Murakami. And I didn't really expect much of it. I thought Yukio was a female name. I thought it was a female author because when I read The Sailor Who Fell From Grace with the Sea, I just felt so in completely immersed into the main character's mind, which is something I never really experienced before with literature. Even though this character, this young boy, is very special to say the least, I, I, was, uh, I was there, I was into it, and I felt like I got a window into that time and period when this was written. And uh, that really is why I was so drawn to his literature. Afterwards, studying the book, learning about uh, Yukio Mishima's life, you, you sort of learn more about the meaning, the symbolism, and the ideas that motivated his work, which makes it even more interesting. Uh, so I think that's why, for me, Yuki Mishima had such an impact this year. And also, reading more about his non-fictional work, like Sun and Steel, for example, was his way of living. He, he wanted to reintroduce the samurai way of living into Japan, and a lot of his book reflects that idea on um, uh, the shift that Japan went through during the Meiji period shortly after the Second World War. Uh, this is sorry, this is <laughs> the, the point is he wrote Sun and Steel, which was for a magazine, and he was an avid body lifter, weightlifter, which is not your typical, uh, I guess, rider uh, hobby. <laughs> because he believed in sun and steel, which is his take on the old, an old samurai saying, the flower and the sword, that's oversimplifying it. But basically it, it was this idea that samurais should spend just as much time writing poetry as they spend time practicing with their sword. And uh, Mishima felt like Japan had forgotten about their steel or, or the sword of Japan. And especially during the westernization of Japan, a lot of his work, like Runaway Horses, uh, his tetralogy, The Temple of Dawn, they all reflect this, uh, this shift. He was also obsessed with the idea of dying young and he really dramatized that and Mishima was supposed to win the Nobel Prize, he was supposed to be one of the first winners. This sort of became an essay, I don't know, I didn't mean, sorry, I just... <laughs> 
I like talking about Mishima. Uh, he was supposed because it's very interesting. He was supposed to win the, the Nobel Prize, but he was kind of a misunderstood character and still fairly young to receive such an award. So uh, he he got snobbed and he went to one of his peers instead and uh, I think twice even he was supposed to win the Nobel Prize. It was sort of taken that yeah, he's still young, we don't really know who he is yet so when he gets older he will probably get the award but uh, for people who know about Mishima he never made it that far. So a very fa fascinating author, his life is equally as fascinating as his work so that has been one of my favorite things that I discovered this year just reading his books I absolutely loved it. I read his tetralogy, I read uh, some of his, I guess, more weird <laughs> stuff, his short stories. Uh, there's so much great work from him that I just, I feel, I enjoy every page that I read. The second thing that I really enjoyed discovering this year, which is something that I never thought I would say, which is Buddhism. <laughs> That's right, everybody. I think a lot of people can benefit from Buddhism. <laughs> Not from a religious standpoint, but just, I think if you embrace Buddhism as a philosophy, there's so much to learn. Especially for me, I think with the ideas around self-control and why you shouldn't indulge in self-destructive behavior. It's, it's something that I really benefited from and it's something that I never really was taught. So I'm really glad I read this book. I picked it up on a complete whim and the sun came out of nowhere and I'm getting blasted like an inferno. Jesus Christ. I find it interesting because a lot of its, its ideas on uh, why you shouldn't indulge in self-destructive behavior uh, sort of correlates to another book that I read. I've talked about it before which is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor E. Frankl who's a Holocaust survivor. He survived I think two or three concentration camps and he made the observation that the people that you know started smoking or did these self-destructive things on the camps were the people that had kind of given up on on uh, in general and these were the people that would soon after obviously not for everyone but would pass away because they they lost their meaning they they lost their their grip i guess you could say you know here i am privileged little sweet boy uh, why should I do these self-destructive things? What's the meaning for me to do that? And Frankl says as well that you should live your life as if you've already make, made your mistakes, as if you already lived it and made all your mistakes, uh, because that changes your approach to life in a meaningful way. And this connects a lot to the ideas, in my opinion, around uh, reincarnation, which sounds really weird for me to say, but it, ha it gives you a positive meaning and outlook on life, in my opinion, regardless if you embrace the religious and spiritual aspect of it, and regardless if you believe in that or not, I, I think is irrelevant. Or at least, actually it is relevant, but it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change the outcome, I guess you could say. If you have a meaning for something, you can go through any suffering. And Buddhism treats life as suffering. This became very weird. <laughs> what was my final point? Life sucks. <laughs> I wanted to also touch upon uh, dystopians, which I, because I think that's something that a lot of people like to start off reading, myself included. One of the earliest books that I read this year was uh, Brave New World written by Aldous Huxley. I love this one especially because it's a good mixture of comedy, uh, intentional or not, I don't know. And uh, it, how grim it gets as well, how dark it is, which really delivers this impactful meaning behind it. I don't want to go too much into it, sorry. But the main reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of you guys are recommending uh, this book to me, which is Fahrenheit 451, which is another dystopia, which depicts a future where people won't read books. They have the same idea generally. But I think these are two great examples of, this one has a great elevator pitch. This one doesn't. But this one has so much more impactful meaning behind it. This just sounds to me like a, the rambling of an angry old man. This is the one that's going to get a movie adapted to it. I think Lily Sings is even acting in it. So it's gonna be great. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> and government controlled information versus information in the media today. I'd say pretty identical. Just go on any social media website and you'll see that there's two sides to every story and everyone thinks- You literally just sound like a crybaby and an idiot, which you are Lily Sings. It's so bad. This book is so terrible. I think it's a perfect example of a book that's the moral is the core center of the, of the novel which just makes it so goddamn boring. In my opinion, the beauty of fiction is when you have characters that are interesting and the story that really grips you in a way that 
the ideas behind it isn't as transparent and they have so much more impact, in my opinion. This is so rambly, so poorly written. It blows my mind that this is what gets recommended. So don't read this one. There's so many better dystopians out there. Whenever you go as well on the top rated books on uh, online and you see see what's popular, a lot of it is self-help book, which is fine. Obviously they have a purpose and there's a lot to learn from that as well, but I would really emphasize that reading fiction, read fiction. There's really no better way to, to get the meaning behind something, in my opinion, instead of get, just getting it spoon fed to you. And I hope that uh, more people get into reading fiction as well and, and don't just read uh, non-fiction because I know I have a lot of younger guys watching me and I know younger guys generally tend to stray more towards uh, non-fiction instead of fiction. But you're missing out, okay? Did it just get extremely dark in here? God damn it. I think that's all I wanted to say. I could probably ramble on a lot more. Thank you for listening so far. I Again, I really hope this inspires more of you to read as well because I had a lot of fun this year. And I also would recommend to start small and also maybe set a goal for yourself. I think instead of reading 50 pages and then, or 300 pages and stopping, it's better to just read something small, like 10 pages a day. That's better if you're consistent with it, at least, than stopping. Uh, and I think you'll find that you'll get into it quicker than you think. Uh, obviously, if you're not used to reading, which I wasn't at the time, it's a little harder to get into, but once you do, uh, it's great. It's really fun. If this video gets 5,000 likes, I will give away my favorite book of the year.